Hi everyone. So today um, I'm going to talk about Hugni, uh, a tool for formal verification of the Linux uh, eBPF verifier. So Hugni was uh, originally implemented by uh, Harry, Matan, uh, Srinivas, and Santosh at the uh, Rogers University. And I've been more recently uh, joined to, to start working on, on this. Um, so before I go into the, the summary, um, if you're French, uh, you're probably trying to pronouncing, pronounce this as Agni, which was my original mistake, uh, but it's actually pronounced Agni, uh, if I pronounce this right, uh, which is named after the uh, god of fire in the Hindu. Uh, yeah, great. So today uh, I'm going to start with a small recap of what Agni is and how it works. Um, then I'm going to go into some of the uh, more recent challenges that we've been working on and how we solve them. And finally, I'll finish with uh, some of the more recent work and what we're planning to do for the longer term. Okay, so the goal of Agni is to try to automate the formal verification of the verifier's range analysis. So it's a specific part of the verifier. It's quite core to, the, to whatever the verifier is doing. Um, it basically is used to track the different values that all of the registers and stack slots can take at runtime. So to do this, it uses multiple, uh, what is called abstract domains. So to track the abstract values, so the, the over approximation of all of the possible values at runtime. These domains are uh, so four interval domains and one bitwise domain. So I'm not going to go too much into the bitwise domain, which is called TNUM, uh, because it's also the topic of like, the subject of one talk later today. However, if you want to get uh, an initial idea of what this is, uh, it's easier to consider the interval domains. Uh, so it's basically if you want to track all of the possible values, you use an interval. Uh, in the verifier, there are four different, uh, either uh, U32 or U64 and then either signed or unsigned, so it gives you four combinations. And it's basically just an interval. Uh, if you know that the value is positive, then the interval is going to be between zero and the max for U64, for instance, uh, extra. Then when the verifier is analyzing the BPF programs, it needs to consider these abstract values and it needs to update them as it goes, right? So if you're doing uh, arithmetic and logic operations, if you're doing a BPF hat, for instance, between two registers, uh, the destination register is going to be updated with the added abstract values for the two source registers. You've got the same sort of things for the conditional jumps. So if you're doing a conditional jump and it's, for instance, uh, R0 is superior to 0, then if that condition is true, so in the true branch, uh, you know that R0 is positive and you can update in the same way the abstract values. When the verifier is doing all of this, it proceeds in basically two steps. Uh, first, it updates the different abstract values independently. And in the second step, it uses the information from the different abstract values to try to learn between one another. So for instance, it's going to use the information from the bitwise domain to teach information to the other interval domains or the other way around. So there are some cases where you can do this and it improves the precision of the abstract values a lot. So to do this, to verify formally all of this, um, you need to first extract all of these verifier functions doing this logic, implementing this logic from the kernel. And then finally, you can like run a solver on this and like solve this, all of this. But then to extract these functions, you need to, well, first take them out of the kernel, uh, add some glue code to be able to run them, to compile them outside of the kernel. Um, so that, for instance, is if the verifier function is doing some write into uh, some global verifier state uh, for, I don't know, logging, for instance. Uh, for the formal verification, you don't care about this, so you want to patch it out um, to be able to run it in, the, in, yeah, in your solver. Once we have done this, we can compile this to LLVM IR, and that's easier to translate into an SMT formula, which a solver can take as input. Before we solve this, we need to add the soundness conditions, uh, so the soundness specifications for the verifier, so basically what it means for the verifier range analysis to be sound. Um, we add this to the SMT formula and we can solve this with something like Z3. 
So the solver gives us a uh, basic, uh, is it sound or is it unsound? Uh, Agni is going a bit further. Uh, you can watch the talk from last year by Harry. Uh, about this, it's basically also able to do the synth synth I'm sorry, to synthesize uh, BPF programs to show the actual BPF programs causing the issues that you found. So I'm not going to go too much into this, but if you want like past results and more details on this, you can watch the talk from last year. Okay, so let me go into the issues that we've worked on for the past year. Um, so the, the long-term goal for Agni is to be able to run it uh, regularly against the latest kernels and pro potentially also against the latest patch set that are being sent to the mailing list. And for this, uh, I believe there are two main challenges. The first one, it, it needs to be fast. Um, solving stuff with like Z3 and things like this is usually uh, not the fastest. Um, so we need to be in a few hours at most, uh, if possible, better. It also needs to be maintainable, meaning that we should be able to sort of forget about it. Uh, if we need to patch Agni every single time we patch the kernel, then it's not going to work. Uh, so we want something that is remaining basically the same and we can forget about it and just get the results. So for the past year, we've been focusing mostly on the first challenge uh, for one simple reason. The runtime was quite high and becoming way worse. Um, so solving was initially taking a few days uh, or even a few hours at the very beginning uh, and it ended up taking several weeks the last time I was able to run it and eventually just timing out because I'm not going to wait for months to get my results. So why is it so slow? Um, the logic for all of this isn't really hard. Like if you look at the logic specifically for the BPF hand instruction or operation, it's um, around 60 lines of C uh, for like the function I've showed here and like some of the logic around it. Um, so it's not that big. However, uh, if you remember what I said at the beginning, I mentioned that like it's first updating the abstract values for each operation and then it's using the information from each other to improve the precision. That is being done by uh, Regbond's sync, which I'm going to mention more than once here. Uh, which is also executed after each per operation logic. And that is a little bit to a lot more complex than the per operation logic. So we can run, like we can link the increases in runtime to specific changes to Regbond think where it became smarter or more complex to be able to handle more things. And as a result, the formal verification took a lot more time. You also have to consider that like the solver runtime tends to increase exponentially with the size of what needs to be solved. Um, so even if the increase in regbound think is not like uh, times 10, the runtime might increase times 10 uh, instead. Okay, so how do we solve this? So Harry et al. designed a device the solution uh, in a more recent paper. Um, the basic idea is to do divide and conquer. Um, this is fairly efficient here for very simple reason when you have these sort of issues where like it grows exponentially, the runtime grows exponentially with the size of what you want to check. Um, divide and conquer is quite effective. There's one very well known example of this in the BPF community. If you're running into BPF complexity issues, one way to solve it is to use BPF tail call. So you're basically breaking it down into several things and therefore the verification takes a lot less time for each independent thing, even if you add them all up. So it's kind of the same principle here. We want to verify Regbond think independently from the pair operation logic, such that we can reduce the runtime. There is one uh, thing that you need to consider is that if both of these are sound, so if the pair operation logic and the Regbond think stuff is sound, then we can deduce that the whole thing is sound. So same, uh, same result as before, basically, we can deduce everything is sound. However, if one of them is unsound, we cannot deduce anything about the complete result. And the, to give you an intuition on this, if you're running first the pair operation logic and there is some issue, like there is some unsoundness issue in there, it might actually get fixed by the regbound thing stuff afterwards. So like you get some weird result from the first one and the regbound thing by learning from each other is able to basically fix it. And therefore there's some unsoundness issue in one of them, but the result is actually sound. So this is basically the uh, potential caveat here that you don't know if, like if one of them is unsound, you can't know anything about the result. 
And this is exactly what happened in kernels uh, up to recently. Um, the sum of the pair operation logic was actually unthorn if taken on its own. So it wasn't a bug in the verifier. Uh, the whole reason considered as a whole, the verifier was correct. But if taken separately, the pair operation logic was unthorn. So that was fixed by Harry in uh, 6.10, or it was merged in 6.10. Uh, so it was specific to the end uh, or in XOR uh, updates for the abstract values. Um, so you, you can notice here that he sent it as like a hardening patch because it's not actually fixing any bug in the verifier. The verifier is correct, it was correct. It's simply making the function taken independently sound as well as the whole range analysis. Okay, so with that patch, we're back in business. Um, in Agni, we implemented a new uh, flag called the dash dash modular, and it's basically implementing this different verification. So it verifies regbound things separately, and all of this is explained in the uh, latest uh, SAS24 paper. It's fairly easy to follow compared to the previous paper, like there are a lot less math. So if you want to read this, it's pretty good paper to read. To read. Okay, so we can see the results here um, for all of these kernels, like for uh, 5.19 to 6. I think seven, the runtime is within a few minutes. So we get like quite a big reduction of the runtime with this approach. Um, so I think it's between like 11 and 13 minutes. And there seems to be like some slight trend growing. I'm, I'm not sure there's actually any trend to be seen here. It's mostly because there's a bit of variance and it ends up being like as if it was a trend. Um, anyway, so it works quite well. Um, yeah, so like I mentioned before, like if one of the two things is unsound, we can't deduce anything about the results. So that's the main caveat from this approach. Um, it won't be an issue as long as the pair operation logic remains sound on its own and the regbound thing stuff remains on, on its own as well. But if that changes, then Agni is not going to be able to ver to tell you anything about the uh, correctness of the form of the range analysis. Okay, so what what next? Um, so more recently, we've been building a CI for Agni. Uh, so in terms of CI, I mean both the CI for Agni itself, so to test Agni to gain more confidence that everything is correct, uh, but also maybe more important, uh, a CI to run against the kernel. So for the past month, I think. Uh, Monday was a month. Uh, we, we've been running Agni against the BPF, BPF Next, and uh, Linux is three once a day. Um, and yeah, like it, it runs fine. One thing you can, however, notice here is the runtime. So it might be very small. Uh, but if you can see this, the runtime is actually a bit worse than I showed just before. And the reason for this is before I showed you up to 6.7, uh, unfortunately, it kind of grew back to numbers that we don't like so much. Um, so it got worse again. Uh, it took, it now takes about two hours in BPF next. Um, there was one first increase between uh, 6.7 and then another, and 6.8, and another one between like the Linux tree, uh, Linux tree, which was, which now is like 6.11 and the BPF next. So we bisected all of this, it makes sense. Uh, it, like, there are legitimate reasons why the regbound thing became more complex and as a result, the formal verification of it became more complex as well. So the first one, for instance, is uh, a set of patches from uh, Andre to update uh, the regbound thing to take into consideration uh, the comparison between different ranges of, of variables. And so that's fairly recent. It got in in six of eight and increased the runtime. I don't think it's a huge issue, uh, or at least we may have a solution for it. Uh, we can simply do more divide and conquer. So if you consider the regbound thing stuff, this is what is taking the most time here. It's basically taking two hours because we can parallelize everything else. Um, that regbound thing function is composed of multiple functions, updating like the precision in, in steps, basically. We could simply take those sub functions and verify them independently as well. And it's likely to give us a very big uh, improvement again. The one caveat is the same as before. If we do this, it means that we are not considering the correctness, the soundness of these specific individual functions. 
if one of them becomes unsound, then we can't deduce anything about the whole result, right? So like there's a trade-off to consider in here. Okay, so to conclude, um, first in, in terms of like future work for Agni, uh, I think for us the goal is going to be to focus a bit more on the stabilization, so to say, of Agni, so it, it is stable, like we don't have any bugs that we could find, uh, but we don't want to gain more confidence in there. So increase the amount of tests that we do. So for instance, uh, when we send a PR to Agni, we want to check that the SMT formula that is being generated, even if it's a bit different, it should be equivalent to the previous SMT formula. So that's something that we want to add to the CI. Uh, we would also like to remove the amount of glue code that we have when we extract the kernel functions out of the kernel. Uh, that's always a bit dangerous. Um, so there are multiple ways we can do this, either by sending some patches to the kernel to make things a bit easier, or by rewriting them with something like Luxinel uh, to avoid um, some of the glue code. We've been obviously uh, reviewing all of the CVs that come out about the range analysis specifically to try to figure out if Agni missed anything, and if so, like what happened. Um, and the one thing I would like to leave you with is maybe I hope the conclusion of this talk that a small change in the verifier, the patch sent by, by Harry in uh, 6.10, allowed us to make a significant change of significant speed up in the runtime of Agni. So it was well worth it from our point of view. Um, we went from several weeks, which wasn't workable, to a few minutes, and we we're hoping to be able to do even more uh, in the long term. Thanks for your attention, and I'm happy to take any questions you may have. Hey, uh, thank you for the talk. Um, so I understand you are trying to verify these parts independently. Do you consider sharing at least some state between them? You know, deducing some state out of the first part, for instance, for the individual uh, pieces, and then using that to somehow prune the state space that the second part has to search in the, reg uh, in, the in the merging uh, part. So you would, mean, it, would it be possible even? So do you mean to do this to help the solver basically solve the second part? I mean to, so the problem is that even if you do it separately, uh, it, so you need all the pieces to be sound, right? If, if, you, if you do it separately. If you, for the, for the former pieces, uh, did you some state uh, or some, you know, some abstract state which you could pass to the second part, then you would pro maybe not need uh, them to be uh, sound individually because you would uh, have something, some abstract state in between them which would help you to, to guide the verification uh, of the second part and m make it faster. So maybe I'm missing something here, but like the input of the second step is the output of the first one? And yes, sort uh, of, yes. yes. Yeah. Some, some abstract state which would like help you guide the ver verification to be faster, but not necessarily needing the, all, all the pieces to be sound. Okay, maybe we can take this offline. Yeah. I'm not Absolutely. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to follow up to the last question. Like, I. I remember Z3 had, so, so the, the following is same line of thought, like, could we cache part of the result of the software? Like, I remember Z3 has some push and pop operation. Like, could we um, run, so could we have some basic check run in Z3 software first? And at that point, Z3 software has some, basically has some preliminary result, and then you you save that state somewhere or maybe fork the process and then next step you run the different check, like more specific ones. Yeah, I'm going to have a hard time to, to answer this. Um, so I'm not super familiar with Z3 itself. Um, if I understand correctly, like it's the same idea. As yeah. The, yeah, so like using information from that you've learned from verifying the first part to basically help in verifying the second part is sort of the idea, okay. Um, 
Yeah, like you need to identify what information you're learning from the first part that can actually help for the second part. And I'm not sure if, I mean, it needs to be identified, right? Like yeah, you need some I, specific I guess my, mine is more less of a question, more of a comment. Like, can we do more on Z? Uh, can we do, can we find some trick in Z3? I guess that's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, sorry for the confusion. Um, <clears throat> I think I noticed that, uh, like you explained the, the slowness, the why it gets like slower around like six, eight. Yep. Yes, and what's the, did you analyze the last jump? Like what's happening in VPF next? Wow. What did we actually do there? I, so I don't remember which patch it is. Um, like we, I did bisect it to some specific patch. It, it looked like fine. Like it was actually improving basically the Rex bond thing again. Um, yeah, I'll have to check on the GitHub. Okay, no, I'm just, just curious. But it's all <coughs> yeah. But and kind of answering your uh, suggestion, definitely, like, if there, is, there are other changes other than this high risk patch, if something like this will help uh, speed up this whole, definitely, like, send it over. Um, how difficult were the modifications, or like how complex um, were the modifications from one kernel to another that you did in order to run Acne? Yeah, so we've had like a couple cases where we needed to make modifications. Uh, it's not too frequent, but it's still more frequent than I would like. So it's basically maybe, I don't know, once every five kernel oh. versions, there needs to be some changes. Okay. Um, it's things like, I don't know, the, so we compiled to LLVM IR, for instance. Uh, there was a change in the kernel to use the um, uh, LLVM built-ins to do the overflow checks, right? Um, that ends up being like a built-in in LLVM IR, and we are not able to translate this into an SMT formula. At least we were not able to do this, right? So then we need to do a batch to translate it either to something that Death 3 understands, and we were lucky there's a similar function in Death 3, or we need to remove it and replace it in the like, C code before we could compile. So it's that sort of changes. Um, it can either be because the kernel changed something, as I just mentioned, or it can also be because sometimes it compiles to something a bit different that we don't support, like a new, I don't know, LLVM IR instruction that wasn't needed before and knowing it's needed. So I'm guessing that sort of changes they are going to be less likely over time as we support more LLVM IR instructions. Uh, so could we eventually see this in um, part as part of BPF CI? Is that kind of like a goal? I mean, the goal is definitely to run it against like the kernel and the batches. So maybe the BPF CI is a good place to do this. Yeah, um, it's fairly easy to run like in a CI. It's GitHub Actions, same as the like BPF CI. Um, there are a few dependencies. It's not really anything weird to to get. Um, and then in terms of like memory resources, all of this, it's fairly low. So like the, the numbers I'm showing here, for instance, um, are all running in the default GitHub action runners. So I think it's two cores. Um, I don't know how much memory, but not a huge amount. So yeah, probably it's doable. Okay. All right, thank you.